Temperatures are finally starting to cool down. You know what that means. The hat's back. Hey everyone, as always Jarek here, and welcome to the game that killed the Medal of Honor franchise. I know there's a Medal of Honor VR game coming out this year, but that's a World War II Medal of Honor game that came back thanks to money from Facebook. It's very different than the modern military reboot that EA actually wanted to compete with Call of Duty. Keep in mind, EA wanted to do what Activision was doing with Call of Duty by rotating out Battlefield one year, the Medal of Honor the next. This worked fairly well for Medal of Honor 2010, then completely bombed with Medal of Honor Warfighter. I knew about this story, but I had never played Warfighter. I did play Medal of Honor 2010 when it came out, and I remember being incredibly indifferent and bored with the game, but not necessarily insulted. Warfighter felt like a struggle to play after a few hours. I just wanted the game to be done. So here's my first time experience playing through Medal of Honor Warfighter. If you're playing on PC, getting the game isn't too difficult, but it is only available on Origin, and it's still 20 bucks. Let me get this straight. An 8-year-old game that killed the Medal of Honor franchise is still 20 bucks. Alright, whatever. Once you get the game, you launch it, and it launches as expected. Nothing really seems to be broken. It's certainly a much better port than the Medal of Honor 2010 port, which was pretty abysmal. This actually isn't too much of a surprise. This is running on Frostbite 2, the same engine the Battlefield 3 ran on a year before. Most of the options you would want are here, but it's missing a few critical ones. For starters, there's no FOV slider. Now, to be fair, the FOV isn't actually terrible, but it's certainly not pleasant. Thankfully, if you want to change it, you just change one thing in an any file and then you're done. But the bigger problem here is, once again, mouse aim is royally messed up. Aiming from the hip feels okay, but it doesn't seem to scale when you aim down sights. It feels more sensitive when you use iron sights. I noticed this right away, and it made aiming just a complete chore. You'll probably see it in some of this footage. My aim looks all over the place. About halfway through the game, one of my viewers came in and gave me a solution on how to fix it. You just changed a few extra things in an any file. And it feels better, but the aim never quite felt great in this game. It's still better than using a controller, but still, it just doesn't feel smooth. But one of the more puzzling, obnoxious problems I had with this PC port is something I've never seen in another game. Occasionally when you're playing the campaign, when you go from one level to the next, the game closes and reopens. Did the game crash? What just happened? Hi, at the extraction point. Yeah, I'm here. Got the it just like opened an entirely new game and changed my resolution and all my settings. What this is doing is opening a completely different version of Medal of Honor Warfighter. This is a completely different executable using a completely different configuration of the Frostbite engine. This is annoying while I'm streaming because that means that suddenly my viewers can't see it and I have to change the game that I'm streaming every time this happens, but also it means that it's momentarily going to change the resolution and throw my windows everywhere. This also meant that since I had adjusted the audio levels in the volume mixer, it was suddenly blaringly loud. I'll explain why I did that later. Now the reason for it using a different executable is because when it went from one level to the next, it was going to a driving level. And if you know anything about the Frostbite engine, it's not really very good with vehicles. So what did EA think was a good idea? Let's just make some Need for Speed games on the Frostbite engine. Since they were already working on that, they figured, well, we'll add some driving in a Medal of Honor Warfighter and use that version of the Frostbite engine instead for those levels. This is such a bizarre decision, and it just leads to a minor inconvenience that is really irritating. The biggest problem I ran into when it came to the presentation of this game is by far the audio mixing. You know when you're watching a movie and you have to turn up the volume because you can't hear people talking and then suddenly there's a loud explosion and you're deaf? Yeah, that's the mixing for this entire game, and no matter what settings you have, it doesn't help. I didn't do any video editing, that's actually exactly what it sounded like, and I had the master volume turned down. Maybe you think, okay, well, whatever, instead of going deaf, I'll just read the subtitles. That usually would be a valid thing, but the subtitles are so small 
Why did they make them so small? Is it because I'm playing at 1440? Is that why this is happening? I can't imagine that would be the issue. 1440 is natively supported with this game. Either way, I could read the subtitles, but none of my Twitch viewers could read them. If you were further away from the screen, I guarantee you, you wouldn't be able to. Anyway, let's move on. As I mentioned, this game runs on the Frostbite 2 engine, which is different than Metal Honor 2010. Metal Honor 2010 was bizarre because the single player ran on Unreal Engine 3 and the multiplayer ran on Frostbite 1.5. The multiplayer was also made by a completely different studio. It was made by DICE, whereas the single player was made by Danger Close Games. This time around, Danger Close did everything. And as far as I know, the multiplayer was actually quite fun, but I never played it and it's not very active today, so I can't speak on that. If you played this game for the multiplayer, I apologize. I have no experience in it, so I really can't talk about it. I can't even form an opinion about it. All I know is that some people say it's quite good, so maybe you loved it for that. So, you know, you had fun, and I am glad for you. Let's start by giving Medal of Honor Warfighter a little bit of praise. For a 2012 game, it looks particularly good, which is no surprise. The Frostbite engine was really advanced for its time. I mean, Battlefield 3 still looks good to me today. And that transfers over to the guns as well. These guns have smooth animations, they sound loud, they have good recoil. In general, they do feel quite satisfying to use. Unfortunately, most of them are only usable in the multiplayer. You get a chance of using maybe five or six weapons at most in the campaign. So that was a bit disappointing, but the guns that are there do feel really good. It's also amusing to see some of these weapons and animations being shared with Battlefield 4. This really shows how much EA was trying to make Medal of Honor and Battlefield compete with Call of Duty by releasing one every year. There's a part of me that almost feels nostalgic for Battlefield 3 by playing this game, because the movement feels so similar to that of Battlefield 3. It's obvious that it's running on the same engine. It's unfortunate then that the rest of the game is so god awful. Let's start with the story. The writing in this game is so confusing and incohesive that it makes the writing in Halo 5 feel like Shakespeare in comparison. I just played this game and I have no fucking idea what happened. I don't know who the main bad guys are, I don't know what's going on, what is the context for anything? Who is this family? Why should we care? The game occasionally tries to make you feel emotional during certain cutscenes, but I don't have any context for what's going on. I didn't become attached to these characters. I have no idea why this is happening. Now, as I said, the Frostbite engine can look quite amazing for 2012, so it's confusing as to why instead of doing in-game cutscenes, they went with some weird CGI cutscenes where people look like this. That is the ugliest child I have ever seen. <laughs> Jesus. Now, if that wasn't distracting enough, these cutscenes are confusing to me because I just don't know why they're here. The main character is a soldier called Preacher. We don't ever get to know his real name, or much about him other than that. In my analysis video of Medal of Honor 2010, I said there's not enough context to really know what's going on. You kind of jump from character to character in between levels, and you never really get to know the full story. But we at least know the war that's being fought. It's early 2000s in Afghanistan against the Taliban. We know that, so at least we have some context. Any context at all is missing in Medal of Honor Warfighter. I mean it when I say I genuinely have no idea what is going on. Why are we fighting in the desert? Why are we fighting in a flooded city? Why is the city flooding? Is there supposed to be a big typhoon going through? Like, what is happening? And then occasionally the game tries to make you feel emotional by playing sad music and having someone dying or being at a funeral, but why should I care about these characters? I left this rant on the story kind of incohesive for a reason. Those are my general thoughts as I was playing through the game. The story is so incohesive that I can't even form a cohesive thought process about what happened. I don't even know how to explain it. I shouldn't have to go read the plot on Wikipedia to understand the game I just played. If you think the game could be saved by the gameplay, you're sorely mistaken. I made the title of my Medal of Honor 2010 video something along the lines of the most generic first person shooter of all time, but that was before I had played Warfighter, and Warfighter takes that to the next level. Medal of Honor 2010 is objectively a generic modern military shooter. Whether you think it's good or bad is not relevant to that point. It definitely is just like all the modern military shooters that came before it, and doesn't do anything new. However, it definitely is a polished experience. That does not stay true when it comes to Medal of Honor Warfighter. I'm gonna borrow a term from Yahtzee over at Zero Punctuation, and read out the definition of Spunk Gargle Wee Wee. Spunk Gargle Wee Wee is a subgenre of first-person shooter games. These games are very linear and focused on telling a story or showing spectacular cutscenes, rather than gameplay or challenging the player. Hence, they often have regenerating health and plenty of guides towards the next scene. Oftentimes, these games are extremely easy. The player does not have to perform well to win because the NPC allies win combats on their own, while the player can hardly die at all. 
Mistakes of the player are not supposed to disturb the flow of the story, since Spunk Argo Wee Wee's are more focused on linear storytelling than on gameplay. They could also be defined as interactive movies. Remember all my complaints about Medal of Honor 2010? This perfectly describes everything I hate about it. And this perfectly describes Medal of Honor Warfighter to an even more extreme degree. I just stopped editing for a moment and looked at the original Zero Punctuation Medal of Honor Warfighter video. That was the exact video where he coined the term Spunk Gargle Wee Wee. I rest my case. You have played this game before many, many times. Except for this time, it's less polished and the story makes no sense. The game is so scripted that you're better off standing there doing nothing until your friendly NPCs tell you what to do. Because you actively get punished if you try to play the game on your own. If you try to move forward, well, I guarantee you enemies are spawning. In fact, if I tried to move forward, I walked into the enemy's spawn and would shoot the enemies as they spawned around me. The game didn't want me to do that, obviously. The game just wanted me to stand next to my friendly NPCs and wait for them to tell me to do something. This becomes an even bigger problem if the game decides to bug out and just not let you progress. I had one situation towards the end of the game where I had a machine gunner shooting at me and at some point the game was supposed to allow me to go through a door, but it just wouldn't happen. The friendly NPC that was supposed to eventually kick the door down, because of course you have to wait for him to open a door like you have to do for all the other doors, just wouldn't happen. So I had to load the last save and then do that whole fight all over again before I could continue. And speaking of doors, you are going to be doing the whole slow motion door breaching time and time again. In fact, they made this a central mechanic to the game. When you breach open a door, a door that you were going to have to breach open no matter what you do, there's no other way around it, it gives you an option as to how you want to breach the door open. At first you only have one. But if you get four headshots, it unlocks the next way to breach open a door. The thing is, these are literally different animations and nothing changes. You're still gonna throw a flashbang in and it's still gonna go slow motion and you're gonna breach the door just like any other time. And you're gonna do this, no joke, about 25 times in the game. The game that only lasts for around four hours long. Why even make such a big deal about this? It's literally different animations. If you didn't point it out, it wouldn't have even noticed. If it was something like, say, Rainbow Six Vegas, where you had different ways to breach open a door and it actually changed the gameplay, that would have been cool. But it's not. I guess they just wanted to give you the illusion of free choice, but if they wanted to do that, they wouldn't have shoved in so many other scripted sequences into the game. You know, like the sniper scripted mission, where you're sitting in place shooting the things that they want you to kill. Point and click on that thing. Point and click on that thing. Better do it fast enough before the RPG takes out your helicopter. Oh, no, you didn't. Restart from checkpoint. Like, god damn, this is boring. Or how about those on a rail segments where you're stuck in a helicopter? You can't really control where you're going. You're just shooting at enemies. Do it fast enough so they don't kill you. But the NPCs are unpredictable and they might just do more damage to you this time than the next time. Also, your minigun overheats incredibly quick. But hey, we're gonna spice things up this time. How would you like to drive a car? Anything to break up the monotony of this game, please let me do something else. Alright, cool, you get to drive a car, but now you have to chase after someone, you can't get too far away or it fails, you restart from checkpoint. Or better yet, get this, a car stealth section in a first person shooter. Why? I'm not kidding you, this is a mission in this game. You have to drive slowly, avoid the cars driving around on the minimap, park when they get close so you can hide from them, and then keep going to the exit. Once you quote unquote stealth by these cars, you're on the open highway and you can just kind of ram into them. It doesn't matter. Because you know, that's what I wanted to play, a very bad version of Burnout in the Frostbite engine. I mean, at least it's not as generic as the other Spunk Gargle Wee Wee nonsense in the game, but God, it's still scripted and boring as hell. The fact there's a stealth car section in a shooter game just killed me. But this is heavy traffic, man. They've never been in a city. Did the game really just crash on me? I guarantee you I'm going to have to do all of that over again. I guarantee you. Okay, so the game goes back to the shooting. Maybe you have to chase someone down. Cool, you'd figure you need to make sure you reach him in time, otherwise he'll get away. But nope, all that really means is that you run after him, he turns around the corner, people start shooting at you, you kill them, then you keep going. This will repeat 10 different times, drag on way too long before you finally get to a cutscene where you can actually tackle him down. What always confused me about these segments is that it seems the gunfights didn't help him get away from me at all. It's like he was stopping waiting for me. Bitch, you should be on the other side of the continent by the time I catch up to you. And this is something that will happen numerous times throughout the campaign. It's like the missions have a few different structures to them and then they just repeat those same structured missions over and over again until you beat the game. It's monotonous, it's boring, and it almost feels insulting to the player. As if they just need to babysit us for a little while until a better game comes along. The best example I can think of of this is that there is a level where a cutscene plays, it cuts to gameplay where you're holding a sniper, laying in place, you can't do anything. You shoot one target, another cutscene plays, and that's the entire level. 
Why was this not just one big cutscene? Did you really need to make me click on something to make sure I was paying attention? And in a vaguely related note, the amount of damage enemies do to you is incredibly inconsistent. Sometimes they'll murder you instantly, and other times you can soak up 20 bullets without caring. Also, why am I playing as a Xenomorph? Why do I bleed green blood around the edges of my screen? Hopefully you can see now why this game failed horribly. It's an awful game, and it came at a bad time. People were getting bored of the modern military trend. By 2012, people were wanting to move forward. Even Call of Duty roughly around this time started to slowly try to transition to some different styles of content. Content that I actually hated because I don't want jetpacks and wall running and a hero shooter in Call of Duty, I just want Call of Duty multiplayer. But that's beside the point. The interest was enough to try to change things up, even for an established franchise like Call of Duty. If you think that an unpolished turd like Medal of Honor Warfighter was going to succeed in this sort of environment, you'd be mistaken. So that is how Medal of Honor died. That was the last game we got until finally a return to form with Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, which is supposed to come out this holiday season. I do plan on making a video of that, and if you want to join me when I stream that, check out my Twitch, twitch.com slash Jarek for Gaming Dragon. Thank all of you guys that joined me while I was streaming Medal of Honor Warfighter. I had way more viewers than I usually do. People like seeing me torture myself with bad games, I guess. Seriously, I got a ton of new subscribers, a lot more followers than I normally did. If you subscribe, you do get to see my videos ahead of time, so go check that out. Same thing for my patrons over on patreon.com slash Jarek4. Thank all of you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.